Yo, what's going on? It's Evan here again, and today I'm going to be talking once again about wet maps. I've made an update to the wet map solver that I had made just a little bit ago, and we're going to be talking about some of those changes. And also, for those of you who are new, uh, basically what a wet map solver is, is if you look at this video clip, you can see how the, the ground, it, it appears to be wet, and that's through the use of a wet map solver. Basically, what it's doing is it's taking an attribute, which I call wet, uh, from the flip particles and then you or it could be any it could be anything you want it could be geometry but in this case it's particles so I'm taking um, what's called an attribute from these particles and I'm putting it on the ground and basically it's just telling the ground that hey this is wet and then you can take that attribute and you can plug it into your material so that you can make it reflective or whatever you need to do all right so here we are in Houdini and just like before the wet map is fairly simple to use. I've made quite a few changes. I, I updated the code just a little bit. I removed a few options and then I added some some new quality of life options and even a, a few new features. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the wet map solver. So on the left side we have create wet map on. So this is just going to be the geometry that you're creating the wet map on which in this case is going to be the ground and then your second input on the right will be which, what you create the wet map from. Um, one of the things I did was I removed the visualize tab and the reason why is because Houdini they introduced a way to visualize attributes so there wasn't really any like there was no reason to have my visualization tab when you could just do it within Houdini so right now uh, the wet map is working but we're not visualizing yet anything so let's go ahead and visualize what's actually happening and as I said I removed the visualize tab so what you can do instead is if you come over here and you click on the node info uh, let me bring this into view uh, you can find your attribute right here and it's wet so this is really cool one of the things I love about uh, a newer feature and or newer feature in Houdini if you click right here you can instantly visualize that attribute and the cool thing is that it's, it's smart too like if you're if you're viewing uh, like sometimes it knows to display uh, what's called a mark or text and then sometimes it does color so it's pretty smart and in this case obviously we want a color so it's that's what it's doing now there is one thing I wanted to point out though. It may seem like it's not working because I'm going to scrub through the timeline and you can see the particles go away and then it starts dissipating, but then it gets stuck. If you play the timeline, it gets stuck. Um, but you can see, yeah, right here, it looks like it gets stuck. So what's up with that? Well, the reason why it's doing that is because the visualizer tries to automatically fit the range. Uh, and that's not what we want. We, we want it to be between zero and one. If, we, if you go over here and look at the post sim, we can already see that the, the default setting is to fit the attribute range from zero to one. So we can fix that pretty easily. This is uh, where you can adjust all of your visualizer settings. And you can see wet right here. So if we click this little edit icon, it's going to say, uh, uh, what is it? Ramp range right here. It's a set using and it's on auto, but we just want min and max because we, we know it's going from zero to one. So now if we get rid of that, let's go ahead and play it. And now we can see that it fades out exactly the way we would expect it to. Let's go ahead and look at some of these settings. And so the first thing that we have is the attribute transfer. And these are these are just copied directly from the attribute transfer node. So if you don't understand the attribute transfer node, you can you can always look that up in the documentation. But the only thing that you're really going to be changing is the distance threshold. And this is just how how far it's going to be searching. So we could see uh, if we turn this up really far, we can see that it's already detecting the particles from there. But obviously, that's like way too far and quite inaccurate. Um, so let me put this on a smaller value and see what that does. So now we can see the particles have to be really close for it to actually make a change. And then under the wet map settings, we have the age. And this right here is the age at which you want the wet map to start dissipating. And this, this value is in frames. It's not, it's not time. So this isn't 25 seconds. This is 25 frames. So it's saying after 25 frames, start the dissipation. If you want dissipation to start immediately or very quickly, you can just lower this to another value, like uh, let's say one. And now we can see when it goes away, it starts dissipating uh, really quickly. Now the actual speed of the dissipation is done right here. And this is one of the things that I've changed. I've added a new mode here, but by default it's on, uh, it's on uh, multiply mode. And so basically what it does is it takes your value and it multiplies it by 0 0.9 every, uh, at every, um, sub step in the simulation so what that's going to do is cause it to decrease in value because it's being multiplied by a value that's less than one 
And so if you want this to fade away slowly, the quick or the higher the number is or the higher the value is toward one, the longer it's going to take. So if I put that to 0 0.99, uh, let's look at how long it takes. We can see it's taking much longer to fade away. And obviously, if we put some value like 0 0.5, that means it's going to be um, halved every time or it's going to be multiplied by half every time. So, of course, it's going to go away very quickly. And one of the things that I that I added is sometimes you don't want to multiply it by a number. You may want to specifically subtract a number. So I've added an additive mode uh, right here. So if you if you hit use additive dissipation, it's going to add a value at each uh, sub step. And of course, in this case, it's going to be adding a negative number. But you don't have to worry about adding a negative sign uh, because it already does that for you. So you can just put in your value here and it'll automatically negate that value and turn it into a negative number. So if we put 0.1, that means, or that means at every sub-step, 0.1 uh, will be subtracted from the wet value. And just remember, it's between 0 and 1. So if we play this, see what happened. Uh, 0 0.1 is quite a large value. So if I put this to a smaller value, 0 0.02, that means 0 0.02 is being subtracted from the value of wet. And so that way, I think... Uh, the main benefit of using additive is, is you may want a very specific value subtracted at each sub-step and it's a little bit difficult to get that specific value if you're using the other mode which is uh, using multiplication so um, by default it's turned off but you can always turn it on if you want it if you need it on and then the solver settings this is just when you want it to start like if you want the simulation to start at 10 you just set that to 10 and then if you look down here we can see that it starts at frame 10 and then sub steps is just like any other um, dop net or simulation. You can choose how many times it's solving per second, or sorry, you can choose how many sub steps it has per frame. And then the cache value is also the same as um, any other dop net. If you want to cache your results to RAM for quick play by, or playback, you can do that right here. Right now, the default is just the regular default value for other dop nets at five gigabytes. And something else that I added was I, the thing is, is that the last version had kind of a problem because I had post sim options where you could blur it and do things like that. But the problem was, is that there was no built in cache node. So let's say you wanted to save out the sim to cache and then blur it. There was really no way to do that because the blur was baked in. So I guess the blur was kind of like the, any post sim option here was kind of useless because you would have to cache it first. But then once you've cached it, you can't change it. So what I've done is I've added a cache section or section that goes in between the post sim and the simulation. So what happens is you can you start here, you do your simulation, and then you cache it out. And then once you've cached it out and saved it to disk, then you can go over here to the post sim and you can make all of your changes and you don't have to worry about caching it again. So like I said, this is really nice because it's it's built in. So you don't have to add a cache node after it. And something else that I added is you know how if you're loading from like a, a file stop and you, you run out of uh, frames, like let's say you have, uh, if, let's say I, wanna, I only want to save out 40 frames. Once you get to frame 41, it returns an error. That's kind of annoying. Um, I mean, it's not the end of the world. You can just add like a retime. But what I've done is if you turn on load from disk, it automatically adds a retime and it sets the frame value to match what you've put your end frame to. So once it gets to the end, it won't give you an error. It'll just keep playing the way that it should. It's giving me an error now because I haven't actually saved it out. So I'm just going to toggle that off. And as I was saying before, I've added the uh, post sim section. And anything, as I said before, anything that you do here, you don't have to recache it. This is all taking place after the simulation has occurred. So the first thing is just blurring iterations because often you may want to blur it to make it a little bit smoother. And then this is just the step size. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, just more setting but then attribute fit what this is doing is like i was saying before the wet attribute is fit between a value of zero to one if you want to do something else like fit it between negative two and three or whatever you want you can do that right here and also you may want to give it another name other than wet and so you can t toggle on the rename and you can switch it to whatever you want and it'll receive that value now if you do change the name here the visualization went away because if you remember we had selected to visualize wet but the attribute name has changed so you have to make sure you go here and toggle this on again and there we go now it's working 
and by the same token you also if you if you do change that value you're gonna have to go back to the, the visualizer and click on edit and then switch it to min and max so it's on zero to one again so it fades in and out so um i definitely think that these changes are going to be very helpful and also give you additional functionality for things that you may want to do but anyway if you have any problems with it or if there's anything else you think should be added definitely let me know down in the comments but either way thanks for watching this video and i hope that you find this helpful peace